Someone asked if the packages have been found from the post office yet. No, not only have none of the packages been found, but the claim that I filed, I mean, I haven't, I haven't heard a damn thing so far. So there's a couple of places that I contacted. So first I contacted here. And I have United States Postal Inspection Service report. And I did, I believe, a U.S. MPS employees in service. And then after I didn't hear back from that for a few days, I filed a mail theft one because I do have a complaint with an employee in service. And let's face it, this is also kind of mail theft as well. So after I didn't hear back from either of those complaints, I then filed another complaint with the Postal Regulatory Commission. Thank you very much to Erica for suggesting that I do this. So I... I sent all the information. I tried to add a TLDR as well so that there'd be a good chance of it being read. Uh, this is not something that I plan on letting go. You, you know, it, it's again, it's one thing if you lose one or two or four packages. It's another if you're hard to contact on the phone. But, you know, call me a grudge holder, but you don't get to lose a bin about of $1,800 worth of stuff after you didn't send someone to pick up for several days in a row then say, oh yeah, I didn't pick that up, and then hang up in the middle of the conversation and then never come back here. There, you know, I got to eat it when I do something stupid. I got to eat it, but when you do something stupid, you got to eat it as well. And there are people that say you should have brought it to the post office yourself, uh, or you should have paid somebody to bring it to the post office. Why don't you pay someone to bring it to the post office? Then you'll never have to deal with this. But the thing there is that if we hold it to that standard, well... You can't expect the post office clerk to do their job, so you have to pay somebody to bring it there. Well, if people can't do their job, then who's to say that the person that I pay to bring the package to the post office won't just steal it as well? You know, if, if we go to that level, we expect that little out of people, then there's always going to be some way that this could have been messed up. I pay somebody to bring it to the post office. What if I pay somebody to bring it to the post office and never come back? Yes, you can press charges and you can file a report and this, that, or the other. But then we're right back to where we are right now. At the end of the day, I think it's really important that regardless of what job you do in the world, even if what you're doing is putting price tags on basketballs at Model Sporting Goods, that you find a way to do it better than everybody else. So whatever your job is in your corner of the world, make your corner of the world a little bit better. And there are people that take jobs in their, and in their little corner of the world, they actually make it considerably worse. I actually got emails from people who were talking about that supervisor by name. I've received several emails and comments from people talking about the supervisor in that USPS video, and they knew his name. They said uh, that, you know, these are other carriers. They said he displayed a superior attitude to, towards people as if he was better than everyone. He's gotten several confrontations with some of the carriers. There are people that have said that he doesn't, he doesn't seem to do well at his job. And from the comments that I've gotten from people who knew him by name, who showed me demonstrable proof that they do work for the Postal Service, this is not someone that seems to have a lot of people in their corner, and from the way that he treated me and my employee and my packages and my business on a regular basis, I'm not surprised that he... So, yeah, it's not something that I, I plan on letting rest. Just for any of you who are wondering, I do plan, if I don't hear back from the Postal Regulatory Commission and I don't hear back from USPIS, then I'm just going to go ahead and file a police report. I feel silly filing a police report because there are people that are getting mugged, there are people getting stabbed, there are people getting raped rape, there are fires, there's all sorts of stuff that the police department has to deal with in New York City that's more important than somebody didn't get their LP 8550s. But you know, if, if nobody is going to try and hold them accountable, and if this person thinks that they can just go and get away with that, then I will, I will go ahead and file a police report. It's not something I wanted to waste time on, but it is something that I will, I will reluctantly go ahead and do. And it's not something that I'd want to do. You know, I've gotten into places before where I screwed something up, like, big time for somebody, and, and it mattered. Like, I, I mess up on a regular basis. I am not perfect. But when I do, I put in the basic effort to interface with them, to deal with them, not to hang up on them and run away. And if, you know, there was one time nine years ago where I was actually completely broke and I was afraid of losing everything that I had, where I actually did wind up ignoring the phone call and running away, but I came back a few hours later, collected myself, called back, and fix the problem, and that's just, it's what you're supposed to do. I'm not particularly sure if this is some, because a lot of people are saying, you know, this is something they did on purpose. I, I always tend to attribute idiocy rather, or ignorance or bad intentions rather than malice. 
not, not bad intentions, or good intentions gone bad, good intentions gone awry rather than malice. Because one thing you do see is that this individual picked up a lot of packages that were laptops. Every single package that was either insured or signature confirmation, all of those packages got to the place they were supposed to go to. It's only the packages that did not have insurance that didn't get uh, scans to the system. So, you know, when people say that, well, you, sh you know, that this person probably stole everything on purpose, if you're looking to steal stuff on purpose, what are you going to steal? LP8550s, MacBook Pro, iPhone 10 that we did data recovery on that now works perfectly fine, or a bunch of TriStar chips. You know, it just doesn't make sense from if I'm a thief point of view that I'm going to ignore the MacBook, but yeah, I'm going to take all these envelopes of random chipsets. Uh, does so. I, I really think it was an issue of incompetence. It only then becomes malice when you go above and beyond to avoid having a discussion with the people who you've, you co who you've cost several thousands of dollars. And it's not exactly the best time for this type of stuff. You know, again, it is one of those death by a thousand cuts things. I have a payroll associate at the payroll company that I deal with that actually kept paying somebody for a full pay period after they were terminated and then said that they, oh, oh yeah, well, you, you know, you were supposed to do this. We didn't have a reminder that to terminate them. So I, I bring up a phone, phone recording. This is one of the great things about Free PBX. I have a Free PBX playlist on how to set up Free PBX for your business and use Asterisk and Repair Shopper and sync it all together so you can have the caller ID be the status of the customer's tickets. You can go, hey, Tiffany, how's it going? It looks like your phone's being reassembled. Wow, you remember me? I don't fucking know who you are, but I can pretend I do, and then it makes customers happy. But anyway, so um, I bring it up. I bring up the call recording, and it says, oh, so you terminated this person? And we go, yes. Okay, so just to confirm, we're not going to pay them anymore, and we're taking them off your payroll. Yes. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. So I send that, pay that, that email to that, that person that works at payroll, and it's just like, you know, stuff like this. It's like $1,800 here, a few hundred dollars there, $2,000 there. It's just the death of a thousand cuts when dealing with incompetent people. And it really does become bothersome when you have people that have access to your packages or they have access to your bank account and they can just, they can genuinely fuck you in your short-term cash flow. And just, and you let it go too many times. You say, well, you know, well, they're nice people or well, they messed up once. And it doesn't work because my payroll company has done this before with a lower, lesser amount of money, and it's funny, I had a conversation with, uh, with Steve here, and I had said, you know, I would like to push for this person to not be on our account, and he's worried that if we do that, that she'll get fired, and we show, you know, this has happened, this person has made two or three mistakes over really petty stuff, and this time they made a mistake that cost quite a bit of money. And with the Postal Service, you know, they've had, there have been these certain types of mistakes before, and I never reported them, but that's what happens when you uh, appease. You know, I appeased you when you lost the four or $600 thing, so now it's okay to lose a bunch of things that are $1,800. I appeased you and said, oh, you just made a mistake with 10 or 20 hours here. Now make a mistake with 80 or 120 hours or something. And it's, it's bothersome to see that when I say, listen, I under can, you, can you tell me what, what happened? Maybe I'll work with you. What can I do to help you help this not happen again? Or say, listen, I'm not going to try to get you in trouble. And then when I don't get you in trouble, you go back and figure, oh, okay, it's not, whew, I'm off the hook. Oh, thank God, I'm never doing that again. It's, oh, well, I guess I can get away with it. I really hate, I shouldn't say hate. You don't hate anything. You intensely dislike it. Uh, my first boss, Sam Feldman, told me but, um, in the uh, studio business. But ooh, it's this thing where I, re I intensely dislike when people figure out that they have been blessed with something and then they, th they, they set that as the standard rather than, oh, wow, that's above what I, my expectation should be here. I got this. Let me be really happy and stay humble and expect this. No, you got this. So now I'm always going to expect this. I was able to screw up on that level. So now I'm always going to screw up on that level. And it's bothersome. And one thing that I've realized is every single time I've had mercy, when something like this happens, it comes back to bite me in the ass. And every single time I do, it costs me twice as much money or three times or four times as much money the next time than it did if I had just been a hard ass in the beginning. So if I don't hear back from that supervisor, if my packages don't get found, if the person can at least give me the decency of a phone call to return a phone call to interact with the individuals that they cost almost $2,000, then absolutely. Police report, everything else that I need to do so that if I have to pay the consequences for when I screw up, which I often do, then other people have to pay the consequences for it as well. And, yeah, that's my rant. I'm done QQing for the day, but for a lot of people have been asking me for an update on that thing. And 
I'm just, I'm just done with it. I'm done. You know, like, I, I, no, no. I'm, you know, Steve and I were joking earlier today on stream, and one of the things is that there was one customer recently that sent in a hard drive for recovery. It was a, it was a messed up piece of junk, like 13, 14-year-old drive using some, mic not even micro USB, mini USB. That's how you know how old this thing is. And it was clicking. I think drive savers at some something are in like the three to $6,000 range. We were able to recover it for around so like the seven and $900 range. We send them back their old drive. We send them back a replacement drive, brand new, all their data, beautiful, working, great. And we forgot to include the mini USB cable. And they called us back and they bitched us out over forgetting the mini USB cable. So what do we do? We priority mailed it to them. I'm sorry that we did that, even though that that cable is completely in utterly useless in 2019 and our website says that we're going to dispose of all that shit anyway we said here we you know what just to make you I'll, I'll dig up my own and i will send it out the same day and priority mail it so you got it back before the weekend it's like if we're gonna it that's one of the things is that if you hold yourself to a certain standard it makes it really easy to hold others to that standard as well, you know, if you hold your parents accountable for the fact that they hit you or they were they treated you unfairly, then it makes it a lot easier to hold yourself accountable when you become a parent and you're at that point where you're debating whether or not I should hit my kid or whether I should have a, a proper conversation with them. You know, if I don't hold other people accountable, that's one of the things that I think about when it comes to these situations. If I'm not able to hold other people accountable when they do things like this, then I'm eventually going to get to a point where I decide not to hold myself accountable. And I want to hold myself accountable. If somebody sent in something with a cable, even if my website says we throw that crap away, if that meant something to you, then let's just fucking keep track of the cable. And if we screw it up, what does it take on the phone to say, I'm sorry, just send it back? We do it. We care here about those types of things. We really do. And... One of the things that allows me to hold myself accountable, one of the things that allows Steve to hold himself accountable is that when it comes to the other people in our life that deal with this, we hold them accountable. And when it comes to the Postal Service supervisor that works at the Peter Stuyvesant Station, Joshua, I intend to hold you accountable. Whether you like it or not. 